The problem regarding waste disposal in India has been ever existing, but the government is planning to resolve the issue by introducing the waste to energy plants in the Indian capital city of Delhi. It'll burn the waste and then convert that into energy. Sounds like a good idea, but is the government taking into consideration the environment and people's health? Here's the story. The outskirts of New Delhi currently lie covered in filth. However, it is at landfill sites like these that the government of India is identifying an opportunity to meet the country's energy needs. According to India's power ministry, there are five waste to energy plants in operation in the country currently. These plants have a total power generation capacity of 53 megawatts. That's enough energy to power around 53,000 homes. Over the next five years, the government plans to expand that capacity sevenfold to 365.4 megawatts by setting up a series of new plants. Experts, however, believe that there are systemic issues that need to be addressed for India to realize its waste to energy potential. For starters, there needs to be a serious revamping of waste segregation practices in the country. In 80 to 90 percent of the cases, the, the sanitary napkins or uh, diapers, they end up in one bin, so which means you're not segregating it. And once you're not segregating it, it directly ends up in landfill site. So one issue is that we are not uh, incentivizing segregation. And since we don't incentivize segregation, you, you end up mixing everything, you know, in, in one place. And then there is no treatment or disposable mechanism, uh, which is uh, set up for that. Lack of adequate segregation at household and institutional levels not only complicate the process of generating energy from waste, but also add to its cost. Experts are also concerned about the toxic fumes that waste to energy plants generate. Some even argue that experience with such projects in India has only shown that they have a serious adverse impact on air quality. If you talk about waste to energy plants, the first part of it is the expense involved. So typically to set up one, it would cost 300 to 400 million euros. And of course, there are extra operation and maintenance costs. Then we come to the harmful part of it. So when we are burning waste, we are also creating very toxic byproducts. We are getting emission of dioxins and furans which go into the uh, atmosphere if they are not properly controlled. And uh, those are carcinogenic. So they are man-made cancer-causing products. And we are also getting a fly ash, a bottom ash and a fly ash are the end products of when you burn waste. And these, these products, this ash which comes out is extremely toxic. It's got uh, highly toxic components in it, heavy metals in it. So how are we at all taking care of our waste? Despite those concerns, the mayor of the New Delhi Municipal Corporation believes that such waste to energy plants are crucial for the city to tackle the growing piles of garbage. Segregation will help in incineration, yes. But a majority of portion of the municipal solid waste has to be incinerated. So I, I do not know what, the, what can we do. We have to incinerate it. If we have to incinerate it, only then we require the waste to energy plants. We are collecting so much of the wastage every day. And we cannot throw this waste into Haryana or UP. We have to throw this waste into the Delhi territory only, and we do not have the places where should we throw. Uh, we have to convert it, otherwise we, but the Delhi will be just a full of garbage only. Given that waste sorting in India still leaves much to be desired in its effort to process waste to generate energy, perhaps what India faces is a trade-off between mountains of trash and toxic air. In New Delhi, Shubhankar Basu, Beyond. Well, cleaning the Ganges, one of India's holiest rivers, has been a key part of Prime Minister Modi's Clean India campaign. Weon met up with a group of volunteers who are spearheading that effort. Here's a story. The tumultuous Ganga of the Himalayas finds peace like many a wandering soul in the city of Varanasi. As per the Hindu belief system, merely by dying in the city on the bank of the Ganga, a being can achieve salvation. For centuries, people have been coming to the city to spend the twilight phase of their lives or to cremate their dead loved ones. The river, therefore, bears the brunt of nurturing one of the most important pilgrimage sites of Hinduism. 
Varanasi is among the most polluted cities in India, a fact that is reflected along the ghats of the Ganga. In the uh, traditional Indian way, uh, the environment was not a resource uh, to be used and abused. In uh, the original Indian way, uh, the environment was referred to as Mother Nature, as Maa Prakruti. Uh, we have this attitude of thinking that uh, we are saving nature for the good of nature, uh, which I think is, uh, is childish and immature. So we have to be very clear. We are not saving nature, we are saving ourselves uh, by worrying and caring for the environment. Since 2013, Temsutula Imsong of Nagaland has been cleaning the ghats of the Ganga. Her mission, Parijat, found resonance with many concerned residents and slowly it became a revolution. Uh, I'm here in Varanasi since uh, 2013. Yeah, last year we started this initiative called Mission Prabhugat. We started from Mission Prabhugat. Or Prabhugat ka halat chota bohoti gandada. I can say it was an open defecation area. You see a lot of volunteer group like us who is working on the guards and all over India. We call it Shamdani, Shamdan group, right? Unless and until all of us participate, at least if you don't want to clean, stop littering. Recognizing her efforts in line with the Swachh Bharat mission, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has felicitated Tensutullah and her team of volunteers. We, the team, the ITBP team, was following Ms. Tem Sutla Imsong since beginning. And that is why when we were about to reach Varanasi from Allahabad somewhere, we made a contact with her on Twitter. And the moment we joined at Varanasi, the group Sakar, Mission Parijat group, under the leadership of Ms. Tem Sutla Imsong, it was the, the best effort we had seen over the complete stretch of 2,250 kilometers. While the volunteers are a committed bunch, they receive a lukewarm response from the local civic authorities. Even the pilgrims do not cooperate when they are stopped from littering around the ghats. We don't get any help from the pilgrims. Even if we ask for it, they would deny it. No one cares to follow up for this cause. If the Prime Minister's own Lok Sabha constituency suffers from systemic inertia on cleanliness, Despite his pat on the back to people like Temsutullah, what hope do other places have? It does not bode well for his flagship initiative. Bureau Report, Beyond.